Montreal really looking like what you might dub the Paris of North America. And as the conventional historical narrative goes, Montreal having a deep history of European settlement. This is supposedly a depiction of Jacques Cartier at Hochelaga. 1535, Hochelaga apparently was a fortified village, Iroquois village, where Montreal resides today. Now is this a historical cover story? Is there much truth to this? Because if we investigate some of the old maps, and this is supposedly a map from 1630, where you have the Great Lakes section being really a, a big mess, uh, makes you wonder about the... Uh, land formations there, or maybe the inaccuracy of the map makers, could be either. We have Chilaga, which we've covered on this channel, um, as a, a name for Chicago. And I don't see a Hochelaga, but uh, the similarity in the name I find is very telling. And I almost think it's a wink, uh, letting us know that there's a, this is part of the old world, Hochelaga, the former name of Montreal. Let's take a look. Let's just jump back quickly to this uh, Hochelaga page where they're explaining to us that Jacques Cartier arrived by boat on October 2nd, 1535. So we have a date for that. Of course, they'll tell us that was because he wrote it in his diary. They also say that a stone marker commemorating the former village was placed in 1925. So there you see the uh, setting of the narrative much later. Um, at a much later date in history and I think a lot of this was going on where they were basically uh, um, in the under the guise of commemorating the past they were creating um, a historical narrative for us and a quick look at the population demographics uh, reveals that uh, lengthy historical uh, timeline which we are to expect uh, modern day just about two million Montreal being the second largest city Canada. But if you look at this, the time frame we're used to uh, looking at on this channel, you see a similar story. You don't see much development for those first, that first hundred or so years. Uh, and not until really we get into the 1800s, mid 1800s, do we see that population boom. So much the same story, even though they were uh, the emissaries of the Vatican and the crown were uh, doing their thing at a very early period, we have been told. And a quick look at the Google map just to show us where we are. You can see the major population centers of North America triangulated here. Let's look at some of the architecture. And we have a beautiful fire station here, a central fire station, with a bit of a Romanesque styling on the front here, but a unique, more of a unique look um, at the top here, reminding us more of uh, old world France. This is an interesting part of the narrative that you'll see several of these postcards, these ice palaces. Uh, very odd situation. This, this uh, postcard strikes me as very odd. Um, very, I don't know, these people don't, don't really look like they're enjoying themselves. The ice palace is supposed to be some sort of festival, which I think they carry on to this day. We have to wonder about it though. We'll see a few more of those. And you can look at the vastness of the architecture here. Keeping in mind, remember that population not booming again until the late 1800s. So not a lot of people in Montreal until you get into the mid 1800s. Yet you have these spires, again, these multi-story buildings. Another ice palace. 
curious. It's a very curious phenomenon. And of course we get an airship. Uh, and if you're familiar with the narrative uh, and the research into the old world, many of us are um, coming to the understanding that air travel was a thing of the past for us. Um, much more than they tell us, not just some experimental balloon or a drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, but something that's been covered up. And then they, they introduce the airplane to us and all that, all that goes with that. It's a way to restrict our movement here in this realm by controlling air travel, because we'd be much too free um, to get around if we had that option. Beautiful, beautiful looking structure here. We'll get into uh, what that building is as we move forward. The interior of the Bank of Montreal, looking like so many of the other banks we've seen, the columns and the coffered ceilings. High, very high ceilings. Spectacular old world bank structure. And I just want to tell you right now, I found it very confusing when searching a lot of these churches and cathedrals in Montreal. A lot of the names seem to overlap, uh, and the searches provide visuals for um, different structures under the same name. So um, if I got, have any of this confused and any of you are from Montreal, please feel free to correct me in the uh, comments as far as uh, rather if the interior I'm showing doesn't go with the exterior. This uh, supposedly marie rien Dumont Cathedral, Basilica, a bit of both. Let's check the inside out. Quite, uh, quite something special. There we have a, a nice visual of uh, the the perfection of what what went on here. They're giving us a timeline here of 1875 to 1894, so 19 years to. Uh, complete this task. And remember how much of the city is going up at the same time. Really drink that in, folks. Very difficult to fathom how this was uh, put together in that very early Industrial Revolution time period. So I have this one under the same name, but not looking like the same structure. So it's very interesting. Also a nice, beautiful old world right here. Reminding me a lot of the uh, state capitals that we see in so many of the states. Um, this is absolutely perfect. And to think that they would have had all sorts of wooden scaffolds in there for however many years, um, trying to complete the ceiling, um, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't jive with what we're seeing as far as the perfection goes. Get paintings on the ceiling. So you do the math. You can, if you if you believe the historical narrative, that's fine. That's it's up to you. But uh, I'm questioning it. I'm here to question it and to show you enough visuals, hopefully that maybe will inspire you to question it as well. Here we look at the Bell Telephone Building. Um, Two-year construction time, 1927 to 1929. And I'll give you a construction photo for what it's worth. I don't think it's worth much, but again, it looks like uh, it looks sticks piled together. Um, here's a postcard of it as well. You can see a lot of the ornamentation on here. Let's take a look at this. Is the ornamentation there still? Or has it been scaled back? It looks like some of these have been scaled back on this photograph here. So not really making sense because this is a very early photograph and not much in the way of interior photographs on this one. This is the Bonaventure station. Really ornate looking. Not the, uh, not the most ornate looking rail station in Montreal as we'll see moving forward. We have a harbor. You can see the tower here. Interesting structure. This would have taken a lot of uh, manpower to create such a harbor like this. And of course, building that structure on the uh, on the end. So 
can see the old style ships. Interesting, a lot going on in that early time period. And again, remember the population, not that high. Nice, uh, nice view of Montreal here. You can get a sense of all the spires. Massive bridge. <laughs> Another ice palace, fort. I have to get suspicious at some point. Were they just easily creating ice palaces like this? This would be early 1900s. And this is supposed to be water crashing up against the ice palace? Strange. Worth including, that's for sure. Oh, we have a clubhouse. St. James Club, looks like. St. James Street. Very old world feeling. Of course, the streetcars in full effect in Montreal. This would be the courthouse. You can see the dome here. Very interesting shaped building. The Royal Victoria Hospital. I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? Royal Victoria. The Victorian era. The era of victory over the old world and the reclaiming and the implementation of the new world. Victorian era. Uh, much more going on there than we've been told. I mean, if you don't think that they're keeping things from the, from the people, I find that a very naive way to go about your, your life. We have discovered that many secrets have been kept from us, and not to our benefit, to be sure. This is a good, a good indication of the type of weather they get in Montreal. So you can imagine any of these timelines and projects would have been halted every year due to the weather conditions. And whenever you have a building that's partially finished over a, a winter season, you're dealing with uh, a certain element of damage. Um, and then you'd have to go back and repair that damage too, right? So very uh, frustrating building process of, as well. So the timelines that we get from any of these buildings not making a lot of uh, sense in that regard as well. There's not a lot of logic to uh, deciding to build something that you know is going to take 20 years, but continuing through with that anyway, despite the fact that you're going to be facing uh, seasonal damage. Montreal with an inclined rail system, we've seen this across the uh, continent, um, places like Duluth, uh, we saw it in, even in Edmonton, uh, many towns having that inclined rail situation. And again, more um, disastrous weather phenomena. Was, again, you have the shadowy figures posing in these uh, postcards. There's something very sinister about that. For some reason, we're seeing all sorts of it here in uh, Montreal. Very interesting. And you're going to see no shortage of castle-like buildings, looking like they're many hundreds of years old. Alright, this must be the new Ice Palace, because they're telling us it's the new Ice Palace, 1909. What do you think? Are these made of ice? So something strange going on here. If you, if you know anything more about uh, this narrative, please uh, throw it in the comments. Don't forget to sub to the channel, hit the like button. Montreal, the Paris of North America. An inter interesting part of Montreal's history that they tell us um, was under American op occupation during the American Revolutionary War, only for the year 75, 76, 17. City Hall. Very spectacular looking structure. Cannons out front, of course. You see this a lot too. I think the cannons are a uh, um, setting of the narrative as well to uh, cement that, uh, that war history. I think a lot of the uh, wars that they have um, told us occurred, the ridiculousness of some of those wars where the, each side was lined up and 
um, directly in the line of musket fire. That type of stuff is suicidally ridiculous, if you ask me. I don't, I, I don't buy that for one second. I always thought, um, watching those those movies and documentaries, if that were me, I would have probably hid behind a tree and um, would have been a lot more stealthy about the way I went about. I'd definitely be questioning my commanding officer as to the um, logic of what you're doing. It makes no sense. So I think a, a ridiculous part of our historical narrative. Difficult to swallow. The Montreal only really incorporated as a city in 1832, so technically not even 200 years old as a city, which is interesting. You think of it as uh, being much older, but... Uh... That's probably a way to pass off the architecture that we see. And a lot of that has been kept, actually. Interesting looking monument. Probably something changed at the top here. They've done a lot of that too, where they put statues. Um, you know, they're resetting the narrative. They have to do their homage to whatever, uh, his, whatever new history they're trying to uh, impose upon the people. And just to talk a little bit about the whole Darwinist philosophy that was taking over in the late uh, 1800s and what that really served, the purpose that that really served um, was to lengthen our our timeline of history and um, everything, it's, it's like a new lens on, on our reality that was, was put upon us by these royal society types. You know, it lengthens the uh, time frame uh, of settlement and uh, sort of justifies the uh, the new narrative. So I think that uh, something very nefarious going on there with that. For, for my end of it, I, I, I have no love for uh, Mr. Charles Darwin. I think a major, uh, major player in the deception of mankind. Something we need to uh, get a grip on and get over. Uh, bon Secours Church, very strange looking church with the statue in the back and a couple angels on top. Very odd. Odd shaped building. They're saying this is the interior. You can see the pipe organ there. Of course, paint. Paintings on ceilings. Not sure what they're depicting. That's supposed to be uh, Stations of the Cross. There it is again, modern day. Very interesting shape, odd shaped building. There's a better view of the uh, entire church. So even just to build like this. And they're telling, this, telling us this was built in 1771, at a time when there was less than 10,000 people living in Montreal. And even, like I was saying, even just to build something like this, um, where you have this, um, this shape of the ceiling, um, this curved ceiling is a monumental feat, even in modern day. Um, and then to decorate every square inch of it, it's absolutely absurd, this uh, narrative they give, this time frame. Less than 10,000 people. Come on. Come on, people. We can't be buying this. Very poor like, explanation. So here's another church. Uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Excuse my poor uh, French accent. We do uh, we do grow up here in Canada, learning French in our school system, but very difficult to become bilingual unless you have a chance to speak it on a regular basis. I'm on the western side of North America, so it's not not a very common language to hear around here. Another church. No shortage of churches here in Montreal. Yet another. And like I mentioned earlier, I do apologize. It's a bit jumbled, my uh, church search. <laughs> it's just so many. See, they're calling this the St. James Cathedral, but we already looked at this one. So that's, I don't know, it's confusing. And again. 
really beautiful, spectacular, ridiculous building. 20 year timeline on that number. In the 1800s, late 1800s. Very heavy Catholic uh, influence in Montreal. So you can uh, bet your bottom dollar the Vatican was doing their nasty old work at this location. Getting firmly rooted in this uh, old world metropolis of Hochelaga and ready to reset the narrative. Not far away you have Quebec City, also a spectacular old world uh, city. I definitely have to feature that one on the channel as well. And now we're looking at a construction photo or we're looking at a renovation photo. Is this is this real? Is it, this looks like it could easily be drawn in. Don't trust any of that. Strange, hazy. Very strange. They're saying it's 1923. The Corona Hotel. Well, what do you know? And you know it's the Corona Hotel because you have a big crown under on top of the dome. Very odd shape here. I wonder if it actually looked like this. Couldn't find anything else on this structure. But it's certainly worth including in the file. The old customs house. Often post office customs house. All rolled into one. Taking the shape of the streets, of course. So somebody's doing some urban planning. An older look at that. This has to be, all has to be planned out. And I find it very difficult to buy the uh, that planning aspect of it when you look at this population booms that all these cities um, experience between, let's say, 1850 to 1920. Um, Montreal, for instance, 1850, almost 60,000 people. 1920, we're up to 600,000 people. So within 70 years, we have 10 times the amount of people here. But you don't see the chaos that should ensue um, as a result of such a massive population boom, you see all this planning on all these streets. Everything seems to be so well planned or well situated. It's very interesting. Dominion Square, they call this Dominion. Ah, it's another one of those words where they gained dominion over the realm. Of course, uh, only by us giving our permission do they maintain dominion. All you have to do is say no. Right. View from the tower. All right, we have another train station, the Grand Trunk Station. Beautiful, very ornate. Possibly the same one, actually. I apologize if that's the case. Another station, St. Henry, St. Henri. And yet another station, the Viguerre station. Check this one out. Hotel and railway station, Canadian Pacific Railway. So we know that the uh, spectacular hotels all across Canada that were put up um, supposedly under the guise of the um, railways. Chateau Frontenac being one of the major ones in Quebec City. You have uh, Banff Springs, Fairmont. They're all over the place in Canada. Here we have the Viguerre Station Hotel. There it is again from another angle. And you can see, of course, the brick cobbled streets and dark shadowy figures. Uh, very, uh, is that Gothic? Victorian Gothic looking? massive structure and of course the rail sheds very interesting this shape here isn't it? with all the little mini mini cones around the massive cone this is a high school they're saying it's just a proposed high school I guess that didn't exist then I don't know probably did Yet another high school, the cupola, basement windows, 
I'm going to I want to get back to excavation, the whole concept of excavation. Um I had a few people criticize that uh um how you know, underestimating how easy it would have been to excavate at that time period. This is a library. Um with the resources they're supposed to have had at that time. Excavation is really, um, it's, it's a massive undertaking, especially for a building that's multi-storied. You have to go quite deep and you have to really shore up the foundations and the footings um, to build on a solid structure. Um, so modern day, if you're trying to build these types of buildings, structures, um, we dig quite deep with the heavy machinery, hydraulic, diesel-powered heavy machinery. And it's a massive undertaking and it's often a part of the job that most people um, don't consider. They don't see, so they don't consider it, they don't understand, they haven't been a part of that process. So if you've been a part of that process and you look back at these buildings from the 1800s, sometimes from the 1700s, and they have these basement windows, um, the amount of work and time that is expected to build that jumps exponentially. Um, whereas if you're just um, building from the ground level up. So you're seeing these massive structures from this early time period, uh, multi-storied structures, you have to assume they go pretty deep. And it just doesn't make sense. We see no pictures of any deep excavations. If we see an excavation, like for instance, the Des Moines, Iowa capital, had some really, uh, really lame photographs of the excavation. They were about six feet down in the ground. Uh, and then coming up from there. No deeper than that. And that's the only real excavation photo I can think of that I've seen from the old world. All of these had to be excavated. Let's see here again. It's Grand Union Hotel. But there's no evidence, no visual evidence of any of that going on. And of course the logistics of digging a hole that size. Where did, where did they put the dirt? Many of these are supposedly built right next to other buildings in major downtown areas. This is the Hotel Windsor. So you have to ask these questions, folks. And to shrug it off is just, um, it's just to expect that they did it. We're asking the questions, how? It doesn't make sense. This is a, quite the structure, the Windsor Hotel, or Hotel Windsor. Beautiful. I have a couple from the interior. Looking like a ballroom somewhere between a photograph and a drawing. You can see how ornate that is. All of the curves and the finials coming down off the ceiling, looking like paintings in each opening here. So this building was constructed in 1875, but they give us a three-year window, 1875 to 1878, at a time when Montreal would have had about 150,000 people living there. Um, imagine building a hotel like this in, uh, in a city of 150,000 people. It had a big fire in 1906, 100 rooms were damaged, blah blah blah, they did, and eventually it was demolished in 1957. As you as you would, right, you should demolish something like this. It's just not worth, uh, not worth holding on to. So what, 80 years this thing was, was standing? This building here? 80 years? Really? Come on, people. More to the story. This building here only stood for 80 years. I think not. This was evidence of the old world that was destroyed. Okay, here we have the Laval University Complex. Very sort of... Hmm, closed in on itself, I suppose you could say. But, uh, we'll see more from, from that complex moving forward. This is a uh, front entry of one of the buildings. Interesting. This guy's posing for the photograph. Multi multi story. Look at the basement windows. Where's the dirt? Where did they put the dirt? Did they haul it off in uh, horse wagon trucks? Did they expand the, the uh, shorelines? Did they make the harbors out of the dirt from the excavations? Where did it go? Where did it all go, folks? Here's another, a better look here at uh, Laval University. Boy, would I love to walk through there. I'll have to put that on my list. Amazing. 
Have you ever been to Laval University? If so, please uh, let me know. Let me know about your experiences. This is the McDonald Engineering Building here. Same building. This is the McDonald Stewart Library there. Hmm. Market. We have a market. And then we've seen the church. There. Is this the market? Wow. What a market. Lucky. McGill University. Another university. So higher education. Of course we need the higher education. How else are you going to um, grab the realm by the horns, let's say. This is the promise of success, right? You have to attend their higher education. Educational institutes, often funded by the robber barons, books written, rewritten. I think we're starting to see you know, what the education system has been set up for. It's an indoctrination system. 1890, this is Montreal. Roughly 250,000 people living here, we're told, at the time. Looking like it's just trying to dig itself out and trying to uh, uh, get on its feet, really. It's, uh, it's looking very rough and unorganized. And you see all back here, all the spires and gulls. And we have a few action shots of demolition, 1969. This is, that's the decade of demolition, I call it, the, the 60s, decade of demolition. I did a video on Minneapolis. I believe there was over 200 buildings were demolished in that decade. Um, here we have a church being demolished. Yet another church being demolished. It's almost, it's like gloating, really. That's what it looks like to me. The destruction of the old world in the name of progress. That progressive mentality, you can, we, we can see where that progressive mentality has taken us, can't we, now? I, for one, I renounce it completely. I just got a scourge on mankind. Something we need to shake off, part of the parasitic uh, mind virus, let's say. No thank you. We saw this one earlier. They're worth another look. Spectacular. This they must have done the same thing, thing to this one. Must have brought that baby down. I don't know for sure though. So lots of uh, lots of eye candy here in Montreal, isn't there? Old world eye candy. Look at the vastness of the columns of this structure here. Canadian Bank of Commerce. No shortage. Rail cars looking like they've, they've uh, they're much older than uh, they tell us, I think. I think they're dusting these old babies off and uh, trying to figure out the technology. They say that the beginning of that narrative was uh, they were pulled by horses. It makes no sense. Why would you create a rail system with these huge, heavy rail cars only to be pulled by horses? And then one day electricity comes along and saves the day for those horses, right? Something doesn't make sense about that, uh, that narrative at all. There's that market again. We have a nice uh, steamship here, the Terribon. This looking and feeling like something from the old world, as far as conventional knowledge would suggest, something up from France, but we have all of this in Montreal. Very ornate looking angels in the architecture. Looking and feeling very 
So this is the courthouse again. Now it's a little hazy, but I believe they're saying that this one was inaugurated in 1856, whatever that means. Inaugurated. 1856? Hmm. Right. Okay, we have a school. The West School, this one. The Mount Royal Hotel. And then the Notre Dame Basilica. So you know yet another massive cathedral type building. And I want you to hold on to your hats. Because we're going to take a look at the inside of the Notre Dame Basilica. And to make a long story short, this thing was built between 1824 and 1829. And if we look at that time period in Montreal, it's right around 30,000 people. We actually see a dip in population during that time. But they're telling us that they achieved this 200 years ago in Montreal in a city of 30,000 people. Come again. There, there's a nice panel for you. Can you even soak in the uh, precision of this? It's, it's, not, it's unbelievable. The woodwork here on the side. There's a view from the side of it. Large structure. Early 1800s? Really? This? Take a look at the woodwork. All you people out there have done a little bit of work with the chisel. The mallet and the chisel. Maybe you've taken it something to the lathe. What do you think? You buying it? Or is there more to the story? Have we lost technology? Have we lost knowledge? Are we being lied to? Oh, wow. Soak it in, folks. Soak it in and tell me I, I'm dreaming. There it is again. Wow. Or maybe it's because I've worked with wood quite a bit. I can appreciate this. But I think anyone can really appreciate how spectacular all of this is. Built in the 1820s. <laughs> yeah, right. Alright, this is back. This is another Notre Dame church. This is what I was talking about, where it gets confusing. I'll just carry on. We saw this one earlier, the Customs House. But we're looking, looking like the street is quite a bit different. Here, looking like it's lower down. We saw a photograph earlier that looked like the street was up here at this level. So, what is going on there? Eh? Interesting. This is the Peter Redpath Library at McGill University. Well, looking like all the hallmarks of the old world structure, isn't it? I threw this one in here. I thought it was interesting. An old pharmacy. Possibly, maybe some Art Deco styling going on there. There it is. Odd looking structure, pharmacy, that's where you go when you need to get fixed. Thanks again, Rockefellers. Lots to that story too. Alright, a hospital. We had another hospital. We saw the Victorian, the Royal Victoria Hospital. This is another one. We just looked at this cathedral, and right adjacent to it, we have some more old world majesty. All right, doubling up now, coming to the end of the file. This is the Queen's Hotel. No doubt, Queen Victoria would be that queen, queen of the realm, Queen's Hall. They're calling this. All right, this is the Red Path Museum at McGill University. Some sinister stories come out of McGill. If anyone's familiar with uh, Ewan Cameron, I believe is his name, uh, linked with some CIA, um, MK Ultra um, projects. That's worth that's worth a deep dive. It's a bit uh, ugly if you have the stomach for it. Um, 
but I know McGill University tied in with all of that. This is the Royal Victoria College. Very royal and very Victorian. 1898. There again, the Royal Victoria Hospital. Let's take another look at it. Very interesting. This one, these are identical, but this one much higher up in elevation. Interesting build. Let's get a date on that. And Wikipedia giving us a very long-winded explanation of all these people that funded it and how much money they gave. But of course, they can't give us a uh, start and stop date for the uh, construction. Looking like 1890s, maybe 1893. Supposedly, this was constructed. It's a bunch of crap. Another high school, we saw that one earlier. St. James Church. St. Joseph, Joseph Shrine. And this one's stretching really uh, close to us in time, let's say. They're saying it wasn't completed till the 60s. Let's read the ridiculous caption here. During the Great Depression, Enlargement of the shrine was stalled for lack of funds. It's funny because we've seen a lot of buildings go up during the Great Depression, haven't we? Uh, the Art Deco period, right? Undaunted brother Andre advised, put a statue of St. Joseph in the middle of the building. If he wants a roof over his head, oh, he'll get it. Now the shrine which stands there today is the largest church in the world dedicated to St. Joseph and attracts two million visitors a year. Mm -hmm. There it is. Well, yeah, and they're saying all of this went up in the 1900s. Come on. You think this would be much more, much better documented than it is, let's say. There it is in the modern day. Massive structure. Unbelievable. Okay, yet another church. This is the St. James Methodist Church. Nothing special about this one. We've seen so many. <laughs> Oh, the churches and the pipe organs. And we know that religion hijacked the true purpose of so many of these buildings. Sun Life Building, 1913 to 1931. This is a massive structure. I do have a series of construction photos. As you would expect for a 25 year time period at that, there should be much more than this. We should see, we should see excavations, but you're seeing again, the same type of uh, photo that we see um, here. We'll move on. This is 1914. So I don't know, like, uh, I think maybe, maybe they did it. I don't think so. This is all old world styling and I don't, we don't build like that. I think. I think we have an elaborate forgery system going on with the, with so many of these construction photos. And it is, I think it is very elaborate. You can kind of see it as we get, it just doesn't make sense to me. 1923. What are these? And then we're working our way up. Uh, and again, you have these little, what, gantries or mini cranes. Uh, I don't know. It just feels like, it feels like a doctor photograph. You can see the lines here, not making a lot of sense. Just causes, uh, causes me to question so much of it. Especially when I see a front entryway like this. And you know, that's just smacks of the old world, so. I mean, you, honestly, for that time period, we should have video. You think that somebody would have captured the construction process. You never really see any action going on. It's all just feeling like it's penciled in. This is very interesting too. Check this out. This is the old an old safe. Really? 854,000 pounds. I'm not sure what what their the weight the entire safe probably. Amazing. And they're saying that this was a, this was it in 1920. The Sun Life Building, 1920. It's interesting. Old World Montreal. Another quick look at the Basilica. I guess he didn't get enough in that sequence. All right, 
University de Montreal. Interesting looking structure I threw it in there. The Val again with its uh, spires reaching to the sky. The library at the Red Path at McGill. More McGill. And then we look inside the library here. Oh, this would be the Red Path Museum. They have a pipe organ. Why on earth do they have a pipe organ in the Red Path Museum? Because it's a repurposed old world building. That's why. And then we finally get to the Windsor Station, which we have not talked about yet. And they're telling us that this was built from 1887 to 1889, a two year time period to construct this baby. Wow. What do you think? Two years in the 1880s. There's a front entryway for you. There's the ugliness of the modern day. Just to give you a good contrast of the old and the new world. And I think that's a good place to end it, really. We are looking at two different civilizations. Um, the brutalism of the modern day and its uh, energy sapping qualities and the beauty of the old world with its, all of its life-giving properties and beautiful architecture. So thank you for joining me on this exploration of Montreal. Stay tuned for the next one.